Spin me, baby. One more time. All right. Low boys. You guys ready to find out what low boys is? Uh, let me show you. So I picked up these two International Cub Low Boy 154s. They uh, have different different tires on them. One of them, well, they're both complete. Uh, this one is complete. This one is also complete, but in pieces. They've taken the clutch assembly apart uh, because it needs some work. Yeah. Leaking something all over the place, too. As you can see, they have little flathead four cylinder engines in them. They're pretty cool. They are water cooled, not air cooled. This tractor is pretty much a parts tractor, though, uh, or a project for someone else. I think the plan on these is I'm just going to try and get this one running uh, just to get it to fire up and then sell it as a running tractor uh as a you know as, as a project slash parts tractor that runs well you may have seen the uh you may have seen the short but look how nasty this rim is well it didn't travel well either it was in better shape than this one i picked it up it didn't have all that cracking you can see the there's still some water coming out of the rim so in order to use this one again you'd have to replace the rims rear tires and that's not something I'm going to do. Not when I got this one. As you can see, has nice turf uh, turf tires on it. I'm gonna get this one running, and then use it around, use it around the place to uh, mow. So what we're gonna do next is get them off the trailer and see if we can get this one running. And maybe we'll do something with that, but probably not. We'll probably just focus on this one. I'll probably actually unload these tomorrow, but through the magic of video, you won't know that. Yeah, so I think I want to get the parts tractor off and just kind of park it right here next to the 54 Chevy. But uh, <laughs> it's going to be a little sketchy. This one's not as wide as that one. So I'm going to have to use these ramps, which I don't even know can hold its weight. But uh, <laughs> we're fixing to find out, though.
hung up on the mowing deck coming off. I had to use the pry bar. Now let's see if we can get this one running. First thing we need to do is get a battery in this. Let's see if the other one's got one. And no. I think I know where I can rob one from. All right, John Deere, it's time for you to give up your battery. Okay, red's positive, black is negative. Oh, these are both black, that's helpful. So one of these is gonna to go to the starter slash generator. The other one's gonna to go to ground. And there is that one. And here is the other one. All right, well, fortunately for me, the negative is a thicker gauge than the positive, so perfect. Gonna let that charge for a few. And I guess we should probably take this off here, spray some carb cleaner into that carburetor. It uh, looks like it's seen better days, but let's check it out. So the big question is, how do we start this? It's got a push button and it has some sort of switch. There's our choke. I press that down. I don't know. You would think it would be in the off position, so let's try that. So with that switch on, we've got an oil light that's lit up. Oh, that's probably a good idea. I should probably check the oil. Here's our oil fill tube. It is also our dipstick. And as you can see, it does have enough oil. It's always wishful thinking that uh, anything that's got points is going to start after sitting for a while. What we're going to need to do is take this cap off, take a look at the points, see if we can clean them up. So this is where it's time to be concerned. This uh, very old appearing cap on the outside doesn't look like it's ever run on the inside. As you can see, there are zero marks on this, which indicates this cap has never been run. This stopped running for somebody, and they tried to fix it by putting a cap and rotor on it, and that didn't work. And then they left it, based on the outside of the cap, for years and years and years. Yeah, these points look pretty brand new as well. It's possible somebody put them on and didn't set them right. Well, that is indeed the case. As you can see, we're at the top of the lobe. Those points should be open, and they're not. So these points are not set correctly. So if you're unfamiliar with points, there's supposed to be a gap there. You can see there's a gap now. That gap's a little bit too large, but uh, I wanted to show it to you before I tightened it down. What you do is you take, you take a feeler gauge. The feeler gauge you need for this is .020. You just stick it between the points, and then you tighten that screw down behind it. And you have to make sure that you're at the top of this lobe because when it's at the bottom of the lobe this closes okay let me set that real quick let's give this another shot oh i was really hoping i wouldn't have to take that cover off and get to the spark plugs but it looks like we're gonna have to taking the first plug out we seem to have plenty of compression here's our spark plug here now we should see a spark when we're cranking. I'm not seeing any spark. Spark's pretty easy with points. The points open and close and it sparks. If it's not sparking, then either the coal's bad or you set the points wrong. I know the points are right, so not too unexpectedly, it didn't work with the coil from the other one either. So I'm gonna have to order up a new coil. I guess I'll order up two new coils now that we know that both of them are most likely bad. You'll see this in another video, and I'll see you guys in the next video.